everybody, Dr. Dave here for another episode of Free Wheeling. Today's question is, how do I have confidence? Or how do I boost my confidence? How do I grow my confidence? And again, it's a question a lot of you are asking. Well, there's a number of facets to this, but I think there's probably two things that matter more than anything. Okay, confidence comes from competence. Okay, so that's the first point. Confidence comes from competence. So when you think about something that you feel not confident about right now, maybe it's some facet of veterinary medicine. Think about something else in veterinary medicine that you do feel confident about. So the annual vaccination appointment. Perhaps as a young doctor, a young veterinarian, you've gotten used to that. You've built up, you know what to say and when, you know the process, you know how you're gonna do your physical exam, you know what questions you're gonna ask in history, and you know you're gonna get through that. Are you a different vet in that particular time frame than if that cat comes in and maybe it's an old cat that you don't know what's going on and, and there's nothing obvious, it's just losing weight and the client's kind of a little surly and grumpy and seems like they don't wanna spend some money. Like, you're probably a different person in that moment. The difference in those two moments is competence. And competence comes from practice. So you've done the vaccination appointment over and over. You may even, shock horror, have had some training in how to do that, right? But when you get into the murky waters of the unknown, then your confidence goes out the window. It's not solid. The great news here is the more you practice, the more you experience, the better you get, okay? So competence will build your confidence or confidence comes from confidence. Did I get that the right way around or the wrong way around? <laughs> Um, the second thing, okay, so practice, practice, practice. The second thing is, it's really important what you practice. And, and the best way, like if, you, if you're into swimming, I use this analogy a lot, if you're into swimming, you will know that if you're a good swimmer, you jump in the pool, you get yourself swimming as flat as you can, and you glide through a small hole in the water. There's very little drag, and with very little fitness, if you've got a good technique, you can just swim and you can never stop. Like it is, it's, it's so low resistance if you get in the water and you swim right. But if you get in the water and swim wrong, I don't care if you're a marathon runner, an Olympic athlete, if your body position's wrong, the amount of energy you have to expend to get through that big hole in the water, you're pushing, it's like your whole palm. If people, you see people swimming all the time, they're swimming up like diagonally. So their, their whole massive body surface area is exposed to the water and you're swimming with a lot of resistance and you're just churning your arms and splashing around, you can get to the end of 25 meters and want to puke your guts up, right? The people swimming flat, tiny little hole they're slipping through that water in, okay? The point I'm making there is, if you're not sure how to do something, don't make it up. You don't have to go practice and practice and practice the wrong technique. You can go in that swim pool and swim like that and you can go and do a length or 10 lengths every day for a month. And you're not gonna get a lot fitter. You get a little fitter, but it's still gonna be really hard work. But if you go see a coach once and they get your body position right and get your arm and your shoulder technique right and your, your hips rolling right, you do that once, that investment will pay itself back and you will double, treble, quadruple the distance you can go in a blink of an eye, okay? So that's part two. Yet you need to practice. Confidence flows from competence so practice 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 but you need to practice the right things which means get a mentor who does it really well where are you going to find one of those go out hunting you can in your practice is a good start point but look for the specialists that do things really well you know look around who's writing in the journals about certain things who are the specialists in your areas who are the people you see doing talks that make it look effortless or seem to know their stuff get in touch and ask them to help you. Whatever it is you need to help with, okay? The worst they can say is no, right? But most people in this industry, in some way, shape, will want to help you. Even if it's a little bit, it keeps you nudging forward. Now, I know there's one other area lots of people, particularly if we're kind of, if you're one of the more introverted people, you, you don't derive your energy from those human-to-human -human interactions, you find them exhausting. Or if, if you're just, you're fearful of public speaking, okay? Well, my advice to you there is go take a class on presentation skills. Like I just think this is something all vets could benefit from, okay? 
go take a class in public speaking of some kind. Yes, it will scare the absolute sweet bejesus out of you, but it is so worth it. You have to push yourself out of a comfort zone. Remember the three zones of learning, comfort, stretch, panic. If you are unwilling to push yourself and go learn things, you stay in comfort until you're dropped in a situation that you're not comfortable handling and the stakes are high, as in in the exam room with a client who, who you're not confident around and suddenly you're in panic and you're gonna make it worse. You're not gonna have a great experience. Then you start to story tell and tell yourself how bad you are a person or you, you switch on crap FM in, in your head and you start beating yourself up about that. So you become less confident, right? Instead, get yourself into stretch zone in a controlled environment with a skilled trainer who can help you learn those skills. And yes, it will be uncomfortable, but you'll be stretching where the stakes are low. You have paid to be there. They want you to get better. So help expand your skill set. So when then you move into a zone where you would previously have been uncomfortable, now you're ready to grow. You're ready to learn, okay? And I did this very thing. So I do a lot of public speaking. Um, I am much more extroverted than, than a lot of people in veterinary medicine, okay? But that doesn't mean all situations I'm confident or happy or comfortable in, right? So one of the things I wanted to keep doing in order to enhance my ability as a speaker to add value to the people who want me to show up at their conferences or represent their brands, I thought, well, I've kind of plateaued as a speaker. What can I do to keep growing? And I thought, what really scares me in the public speaking era or, or area? And I thought, stand-up comedy. <laughs> And so I put myself on to a stand-up comedy class and I can tell you I've never crapped myself as much in my life as having to do that. But we went in on a Saturday morning with zero comedy skills. <laughs> like, and I tell some truly heinous dad jokes. Emma's nodding like, so yes. Um, and on Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. we knew we had to deliver a set. Not a long set, like a minute and a half, but let me tell you, when you have a mic in your hand and the room expects you to make them laugh, that minute and a half might as well have been a lifetime. You know, mountain ranges were like, grew up out of the ocean, were whittled away by like, by erosion in that minute. It could have gone so slowly, but it didn't. And it was terrifying and people laughed and I screwed it up and, and we had so much fun. And my skills grew because of it, right? I'm still not funny, <laughs> but it was great. And my skills as a speaker grew. So look for the areas of resistance. Look for the things that make you feel like you're lacking in confidence and lean into them, but lean into it in a controlled way because I'll guarantee you one thing, life is going to put you in those situations and you can choose to run away or you can choose to beat yourself up or perform poorly, that is a choice. Or you can choose to, to grow and stretch into those areas. That is also a choice. I know which one I would prefer to take and I know which one I'd advise you to take. So. Tell me, was that useful? Is it in some way motivating or inspiring to get you to take action? Do you know someone else who could benefit from hearing this? If you do, please share the videos. We'd love you to, to be out there and advocate for us. And leave us comments in, in, in the, the comment box beneath or hit me, hit me up on Instagram at Dr. Dave Nickel. Until the next show, be safe, be well, and be happy.